Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we're talking about here is, is uh, writing and evaluating expressions, but these are addition and subtraction expressions. But the first thing we need to discuss here is how specific we need to be with regard to our, our, our real world situations here. For example, we have Joshua's speed. We're going to use J to represent Joshua. But we're using the word speed, but speed isn't descriptive enough. We need to be a bit more specific here. J is going to represent Joshua's speed, but what is that speed? Because speed can be measured in miles per hour or meters per second or yards per minute or really whatever you want it to be. But we just need to make sure that things are specific so that when we come up with an answer, our answer can be very specific, easy to read and easy to understand. So in our complete description with units now, not only are we talking about Joshua's speed, and J is going to represent Joshua's speed, but what specifically is that speed that we're working with here? So we're going to say let J represent Joshua's speed, and we're going to come up with something. Speed in, let's say, meters per second. Okay? And speed is a rate, so we need to have meters per second. We need to have a comparison there, okay, or some, or some type of ratio. In height, we have Rufus's height. R is going to represent Rufus, uh, Rufus's height. Now, what is height measured in? Well, we can have height being measured in inches or feet or whatever. Amount of milk sold. We're talking about an amount here. So we're we talking about quarts of milk or we're we talking about gallons of milk. That needs to be understood. So when we're writing our complete description with units, we need to make sure that things are very specific so that when we come up with an answer, it makes sense, okay? Time, minutes or seconds or months or years, or whatever it is, age, whether that's months or years, that kind of thing, okay? Once we have all that taken care of, now we can start working on some problems here. We have Greg. He has two more dollars than his brother Jeff, okay? So Greg has more money. Good for him. Two more dollars worth. Write an expression for the amount of money Greg has. Now, all of this was done for you, so I'm just going to cruise through this one. J, J, J represents Jeff's money in dollars. Okay, in dollars, we have our units um, all nice and done. And our expression is going to be J plus 2. So whatever J has, uh, Greg's going to, going to have two more dollars than that. So let's say Jeff has $12. So here's our expression, J plus 2, whatever, J, uh, whatever Jeff has, Greg's going to have two more dollars. So I'm looking for what Greg has. So that's J plus 2. J happens to be 12. So 12 plus 2, that gives me 14. Therefore, Greg has $14. Okay? Now, to reverse things a little bit, using essentially the same problem here or same situation, Greg once again has two more dollars than his brother Jeff. But now we're going to talk, use, uh, I guess, think in terms of Greg's point of view. We're going to make G equal Greg amount, Greg's amount of money. Now, remember, Jeff has to... if Gary, excuse me, if Greg has two more dollars, then Jeff has two less dollars or two fewer dollars. So we're going to make G minus two be our expression because we're looking for what Jeff has. Now, if Greg has $14, okay, we're going to take what Greg has, we're going to subtract two, and we're subtracting two because we know Jeff has two fewer dollars. And how do we know that? Well, because Greg always has two more dollars. So the opposite then would be true for the other brother. We take 14, subtract two, we wind up with 12. So Jeff has $12. Greg has 14. Jeff has 12. And it all fits. Okay? Now, later on in the chart, what happens is they give us a, a little bit of information, but we need to fill some things in. We have Abby. She read eight more books than, than Kristen in the first marking period. Okay? Abby read eight more books. So this is an add situation here. Okay? Plus eight. I write an expression for the number of books Abby read. Well, we need to assign some things here, okay, uh, a variable. So uh, let's make K represent the number of books Kristen read, okay? So K represents the number of books, okay, Kristen read. Okay, number of books, and we have our units in there. And, uh, oh, in the first marking period, I guess we should put that in there. In the first marking period. 
Okay, from there, put a period at the end. We need to come up with an expression. So uh, that expression is going to be k plus 8. Now remember, Abby read eight more books. So whatever, uh, whatever uh, Kristen read, Abby read eight more. So we have that plus eight going on right there. Now we're saying that Kristen read nine books in the first marking period. Okay, that's fine. So our expression is, or our formula is K plus eight. Now we need to fill some things in. If Kristen read nine books, I'm going to replace that K with nine. And I'm still going to add eight. And if I do add eight, I wind up with 17 which means that Abby read 17 books in the first marking period. Okay? And that's what we worked on today. Being specific, setting things up, finding variables or creating variables. This, this K we kind of made up. We made K represent the number of books Kristen read, and we knew that she had read nine books from this piece over here, so that we used our nine, and we used that plus eight over here to find out exactly what Abby had read. And how do we know Abby read um, eight more books? It told us that right at the beginning. Okay? That's the deal, folks. All right? Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.